Hello everybody and welcome to a special Now Playing. We're here with Todd Pappy from Sony Santa Monica and we're about to check out God of War 3. So tell us exactly what's going on right now because this game we've seen in the demo, kind of Kratos is already on a warpath, but right now is kind of where it all starts. So where are we? Right. Well we pick up on Gaia's shoulder, scaling Mount Olympus to go kill his father. And he's still mad. And he's still very, very angry. Okay, well let's see him exact some revenge. Now just to be clear, while we are on Gaia's shoulder, she's kind of a living environment. It's one of the, the cool new things that you guys Correct. are doing with this game. So. so this is our Titan tech, and you'll see that she's actually climbing. You'll see the mountain scrolling in the background. Um, and when she moves around their shoulder, it deforms, and the player kind of has to deal with it. And you'll see a little bit later on, um, some of the nav changes that happen um, when she moves. Now, from the look of it, you guys have obviously bumped up the amount of all blood and, and people on screen. So Correct. talk to us about sort of all the kind of stuff that you guys have crammed into the game. Well, we've, we want to increase the gore, and obviously with the power of the PS3 now, we can, we can, we can push um, the gore level, we can push the amount of uh, characters that you have on screen, but at the same time, we wanted to uh, adjust the way that the um, player interacts with those characters. So you can actually grab them, use them as battering rams, and throw them, or you can uh, rip them apart and do some of the stuff that we had in prior games. Um, now, who just took it in the chest, and what was that? Well, <laughs> I don't know the Titan's name that took it in the chest, besides uh, Rock Boy. And then um, this is actually kind of our introduction of the Leviathan. <laughs> Guy is in pain. She got uh, grabbed by the ankle. Um, and then you'll see the Leviathan actually take down another Titan in the background. So this Leviathan water base? Yes. Assuming maybe something to do with Poseidon? Maybe. Maybe. Helios just flew by, and so we wanted to make sure that this was in a state of war all the time. Um, so we've got uh, some of our new combos that you can see. Um, this is all stuff that uh, kind of carried over from God of War 2, so you can you can play uh, beefed up and everything. Now you did collect a lot of powers and, and kind of grow an ability over the course of the previous God of War games. How's it going to work in this? Because you're already pretty amped, amped up right now. Well, I, I don't want to ruin anything <laughs> for the players. But it's safe to assume that you're going to get some more stuff. Yes, you will, you will definitely uh, get more weapons and um, new items that are used for world interactions and also um, can be used in combat. Now, we've seen this thing before and we didn't know what it was then and we still don't know. It looks like <laughs> some kind of a water horse with crabs on it, so can you explain to us what it is? Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically what you said. It's, um, it's a horse creature that has um, crab legs and kind of the crustacean uh, shell to it. Um, this is this was actually uh, one of the first concept pieces that we did for um, the Poseidon uh, encounter. And uh, we were sitting in a room um, with one of our concept designers and he drew something very close to what's in the final product right now. So here you can see that this was all a transition state, all in game. Um, you can see when, uh, when we're playing, when we're actually doing the transitions, you can swing the blades and there's no faking of what's, uh, what's happening right now. So the Leviathan actually twisted Gaia's arm and has her pinned upside down right now. And then you, you need to do enough damage to it in order to kind of rectify the situation. And, and to be clear for, for folks at home that are trying to keep track of their mythology, this water horse crab thing, maybe not actual 
factually correct mythology. It's something that you guys have come <laughs> up with, yeah? Well, it, yes, and that's, that's with uh, um, some of the uh, creatures and characters that we have in, in the game. Um, for the most part, there, there was a Kratos um, in actual Greek mythology, um, but we wanted to take our character and weave Greek mythology around them. So have Zeus, have Athena, have Ares, and have all these big name characters that um, help ground the story. Now as far as the story and the scale on the, on the PS3, were you guys concerned at all when you all of a sudden had all this new power to work with that you were going to be able to, to get the mix right? Because the, the previous two games have set a pretty high watermark mm -hmm. uh, and, and almost an archetype that we've seen you know, other folks try and follow. So what was it like trying to compete with yourself? <laughs> uh, a hassle. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's with everything that we do. We, we always try to push it and um, I think we're our harshest critics. Um, but just the detail level, um, we weren't expecting stuff to take as long as it does in order to uh, build a character or build a level. I, we were expecting it almost like... Uh, oh, death minigame. Yep. So again, this is a training one, so it's, it's a little bit easier than everything else that you can see in the game. But he loses a jaw. It's kind of a rough thing. So as you can see, uh, Kratos was hanging onto it and um, pulled its way actually through Gaia's wrist. And now you jumped and landed on Mount Olympus. You can see some of our traditional nav. Um, it's a way to mix things up, make, make things feel new. Because the player's not doing just combat all the time. Now, if you play the previous two games, you should be completely at home. Correct. We didn't want to do like Kratos in space or anything like that. It's, it's, um, it's a trilogy. We wanted to finish the story um, while still taking uh, and adding new things to it. The Leviathan actually grabbed her ankle and um, pulled her back down and uh, is going to be wrestling with her while you're trying to make your way back to her. And just in terms of balancing, you know, we've seen Kratos scale up in ability and power in, mm -hmm. in previous games, and he's already pretty beefy. He has a pretty wide move set. Um, how do you guys go about deciding what other things to add and to still keep him balanced? Because, I mean, it's probably pretty easy to have him be incredibly overpowered and murder everything. Well, it's, we want the player to, to feel like a badass, but that's the beauty of doing a single player game is you can make the the main character feel um, more brutal than the surrounding AI versus like a competitive game you have to worry about that balance and make sure making sure that everything's fair versus what we can do is we can tilt stuff in Kratos' favor. And you know not to spoil too much of the story but I have a, I have a strong sense that you know Aswas will be kicked in Olympus <laughs> uh, but can you give us a sense of the game's Gale. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not all in Olympus. I'm, there's got to be somebody else he wants to kill in some other... In some well, it's, it's in essence dealing with the mountain and um, j we're showing off one of our new features which is basically the free look cam and the player can look around and explore new set pieces and, and get better looks at the beautiful artwork. So if we grab the grunt, we can actually run with him and use them as uh, as a battering ram, or rip them in half. Or rip them in half. Or so there you can see, and then we've got kind of wall reactions where uh, players will slam into the wall, and we can use the wall as as an actual weapon. Now you were talking about the gore in the game and how you guys wanted to up it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that there must be like a, a list of ways to eviscerate people that you guys have just been working your way through. Um, can you give us a sense of what you guys have, what fun ways to murder people folks can look forward to in this game? So with our zipper tech, um, we can do gutting or we can actually 
uh, basically show slices or cuts in creatures um, and then obviously just decapitation, ripping in half, um, losing limbs. Uh, and so you can see that with the grunts, uh, the randomly generated, you can actually knock off their legs, they'll, they'll crawl towards you. Um, and then we, with our centaur creature, they actually have the guts inside that you can split open and see. Like anybody who's played the demo has seen their Correct. fair share of centaur. Correct. Now, one of the, the cool things in God of War 3 that we noticed, even from the demo, was that enemies will now sort of come out of the background at you, because it looked like that centaur did, and uh, later, in, later on, uh, in, in the area where the, the demo takes place, that happens. With the camera. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. it, it, like, it seems like a pretty cool and easy thing to do, but it probably wasn't. You want to talk to us about that? Well, it's, it's making sure that every character has a unique intro. Um, so we wanted to make sure that it's a way to sell a character besides just animations and, and tells and different moves that they're doing. We want to make sure that the intro kind of sold what they can do and some of their characters. So with this, you saw the centaur come rushing at you and, and put you immediately into kind of a, a defensive mini game where he lifts them up and throws them over. And you just saw the, the gut, gut tech again. So in, with the Chimera, we were able to show some of those different states where we showed the snake come out and then showed the lion and the goat. And, um, you know, just for just to be clear with folks, the orb system's back. Correct. Works pretty much exactly the same, yeah? Correct. Correct. Very similar e economy and um, branch upgrading and stuff like that that we had in the past. So, again, we've got our world interactions um, and we've got puzzles, you know, as varying in difficulty from this one where you just pull a lever and you got to get over to something in time to um, some of the stuff that we have later on in the game, which take 15 to 30 minutes to figure out. And that would be our save point and the good Correct. old trusty chest. Correct. Sorry, I'm on a completion. Sorry, That's all right. I see that. Open it before <laughs> you need them. And this is Linda Hunt, again, having a real bad day. Correct. So here the Leviathan has actually kind of skewered itself through the collarbone, and now you get pulled out and you're going to fight on her chest. And it skewers her lip. A little emo. Nice. So here you're dealing with uh, completely new attacks, completely new uh, situation versus what was dealt with on the arm. You know, not to ruin anything for anybody at home, but is it safe to assume that this is similar in spirit to the Hydra battles that we've seen in the previous games, where there's one head and there's another one and it's all attached to something really big that, that needs a, a whooping? It could be, um, it, but also if you look on this one, this one actually doesn't have a jaw, so maybe it's the same one that you've been dealing with. Interesting. Did not catch that. Hard to look. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to see with all the water effects and everything like that. Um, as a little tip here, if you you got to hit it while it's, it's crawling towards you, and if you do enough damage, then it'll re recoil. And, you know, one thing to ask is developers love power, and they love being able to make cool stuff happen on screen. Mm -hmm. And this game lends itself to that, but how did you find the balance between going nuts and letting people keep track of what the heck was going on. <laughs> uh, it's a fine line. It, we do a lot of play tests um, and to make sure that the things are reading clearly, um, people are understanding the situations, um, and then you can kind of see what we do with our camera, um, where we'll take control away for just a second to show uh, something that we feel is very important to the player. Um, and then we've got our sparkles and everything like that.
and you can see in the background just the, the scale that you guys mm -hmm. are are offering. Is this basically the the scale that God of War was always meant to be at for you guys, or do you guys think that you could go even bigger? Um, no pressure. <laughs> I don't know if we could go any bigger. Uh, it's it's something that we've always wanted to do. Uh, with we kind of hinted at it with one and two, um, where you're on Titans or you're dealing with Titans, and just the scale of them, um, and then also the uh, it was all fake. Versus now, we can do this for real. They're moving around. So, um, it's, there's a hell of a lot more movement that's going on, um, and then you do an, a nice little shoulder ram into a creature. And you just kind of stabbed him with his own claw thing. Yeah, you, you, um, it was a way to kind of incorporate a little puzzle into the boss fight. So, I mean, in a way, this is kind of a green game. Kratos is very big on recycling. Yes, and helping Mother Earth. Which he's now inside of. Yes. Awkward. <laughs> This tight close-up just gives us a look at Kratos' model, which you guys seem to have gone crazy with. Correct. Um, our lead character artist uh, has been working on Kratos' model for, uh, I want to say, probably about three plus years now, even before uh, God of War II was done. So it's it's gone through multiple changes, and it, it constantly was getting noodled and over and over again. but. What you see in cinematics, what you see in um, in the game, there's no LOD or anything like that. It is the same model all the time. That looks bad. So this is actually Gaia's heart. Oh, well, maybe it's not so bad. He's not going to stab it, is he? I mean, he's prone to these kinds of things. No. He's helping her. So with this, um, this is actually kind of our, our first easy puzzle. Um, that the player gets to interact with. Uh, you can explore this area and uh, get a little trinket um, and then also kind of hint at some of the story that was uh, talked about in God of War 2 where uh, Zeus was actually raised inside Gaia and so you can actually see um, this is a godly possession um, and you can use that for replays in the game. But if you stayed up there a little longer, you can actually see uh, what Zeus's, uh, Zeus's childhood was. And he did some drawings up there. And um, it's kind of a, a nice little tie back into God of War II. Kind of like his room. Exactly. So here, you actually need to take it, get across to the other side, and use the climb wall. And connect the, the climb wall so you can actually get up to this grapple point and exit the area. And thankfully, this is this is one of the the quieter moments in the game, at least right. so far, right? Because how are you guys basing um, or kind of balancing the pacing? Well, that's that's something that we wrestle with um, constantly. So we've got puzzles, we've got navigation, and we've got combat, and those are the three pillars from design that we build on. And then it's mixing and matching those and making sure that everything feels new. So sometimes you'll have a puzzle just by itself, or you might have a navigation puzzle, or you might have a combat puzzle. And it's mixing and matching those, making sure that we're not hitting any like back-to-back -back puzzles or back-to-back -back really big fights or anything like that. And, and uh, it, slowing, the, slowing the action down helps make the, the big moments feel a little bit bigger. Now, just in terms of the overall experience, would you say that it's comparable to the size of the, of the previous games? Is it bigger? Is it smaller? I would say that it's comparable to uh, God of War 2. So, um, then you actually come out here and you're on the back of Gaia's head now. And then this is our big reveal. That is... That's a sm one creature, yeah, and then another creature. That's a problem. And then the big daddy. And look at that. 
Poseidon is riding a large water horse, and <laughs> hey, Kratos is not real happy. Then face me! You have disrespected the god. I think we're probably gonna have to kill that. Maybe. I don't think he's very friendly. And so there you go. That is the first 20 odd minutes or so of God of War 3. Um, you know, give or take, because there's some stuff that we didn't do, like we didn't check out Zeus's bedroom inside Gaia, and there's a few other trinkets that completionists like myself uh, would probably want to go back and, and check out. So, what would you say? This is probably Kratos' bloodiest, uh, bloodiest game? Definitely. All right. Now, we know everybody wants it, so we're actually going to, for one special reader out there that's good with the trivia, we have got in front of us the... What do, you, what do you guys call this? This is collector's edition. Um, so it's, it's got the box, it's got the game, and it's got other uh, interesting items in there. So there's a ton of cool stuff. These are very limited edition. I think most of them are pre-sold out on at your usual retailers. But we're going to have one for you guys if you can answer one very important trivia question. And that is, can you name the Titan that Helios is fighting in the demo on PSN that probably everybody's played? Um, we'll give you a little bit on the spelling of the name because it's a little crazy because it's old school Greek, but get the name and you get this. We've got one of them because they're very hard to come by. And so yeah, there you go. That is God of War 3. Thank you very much, Todd. Thank you.